my colleague and I, we went to a school for menstrual health class. After the class, a class seven student followed my colleague. She looked a tear in her eyes and she said, where were you all this time? She gave us a story, her own story. One time, her mother gave her an extra bed. She put it in her bag. She went with it in the school. When she felt that she wanted to change, she didn't find it in her bag. When she was looking for it, she realized one of her friend, a boy, took it out of her bag and made fun of it. While she was looking for it, outside the school, boys were making fun. They are laughing at her and making fun of her product. At that moment, my colleague didn't have the help she needed. She followed me afterward and she told me, I had this story, but it's not nice. Then I told her, ask her, when we come next time, we will have a definite solution. But really, we didn't have anything to say. I also felt nervous because I'm a human. She's a human. A girl or a woman menstruating is not something bad. It's not a bad luck. It's a part of being a woman. Then we came to realize later if menstruation started recently, it's not. It was there. It is there and will still be there. But if we think there is no house that has no woman. There is no house that has no a girl. Even here, we are men and women. Can we think why menstruation is still such a taboo topic? If I mention a name of a famous musician or artist, we'll all react. But if I say menstruation or a period, then the conversation might end. The faces might look wrinkled. Why? Let's see. In the world, we are about 7.8 billion people. And the difference in number between the population of men and women is very slightly, almost the same. But why are women not strong enough to stand and speak what they go through? Why are women are not strong enough to raise the points that are about their health? Why? And it's estimated half of the female population worldwide menstruate. And approximated to 300 million women menstruate every day. This number is bigger than none artist. No artist has ever sold albums even close to that number. Why menstruation is still that such a taboo? One thing came in mind when we were debating what to answer that lady, that young girl. Then we said, if a woman is not strong enough to speak to her daughter, then there is something to do with the head of the family. In our social structures, men are in the position to lead. Men are the decision makers. Men are the police makers. It does not mean that they are not aware. The thing is, they do not take time to understand what really it takes being a woman. All these leaders, all these men, these guys are married. And we know in our culture, if a woman does not have a child, the marriage ends. And you, a woman cannot have a child if she does not have menstruation. So why can't we talk about menstruation and we break the marriages that where a woman cannot conceive? It's not that men are doing it on purpose. I'm not sure. Maybe. But the thing is, they think it's not their thing. It's a women issue. It's just something men should not talk about. And maybe we think 
That is against our norms. If it's against our norm, now we should, stay, we should think, why are we spending so much time planning and arranging a wedding? We spend months, even years. We spend resources planning for a wedding. But think how much time as a father or an uncle have you ever spent with your daughter? Calculate the amount of time you spent going to the weddings and think how much time you spend with your kids. This silence has so many effects. This was one story of a primary student. And this year, when we were organizing Menstrual Hygiene Day, we met a young woman who became a teenage single mother when she was in primary school. Everyone, when, when we were young, we had these big dreams. I want to become a lawyer. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a president. She had those dreams. She really wanted to be one of those people. But due to the silence of the father, the head of the family, the leader that should be leading conversation in the family was quiet. Her mother neither did because the mother was not strong enough to stand and speak. So when she started to menstruate, she had no idea what it takes being a woman. She had no idea of the transition from a girl to a woman. What she did out of her decision, and because she was young, she can make decisions, she, she secretly fell in a sexual relationship with an older guy who could provide what she needed for menstruation. Does not mean her father couldn't, but the father had no time. Maybe he thought, this is not my duty. I'm not here to attack men, but just to remind you, this is also our duty. If you can contribute 100,000 for a wedding, and you can't give to your daughter 5,000 for her period needs, then there is something wrong. If you wish your son to have a beautiful wife, then you should think that you should be responsible. So this lad was just out of her home by her own father. Her mother had nothing to, to, to say because the father decides. What was the source? What was the cause of her being chased out of her own, her own home? It was because when she became a teenager, when she started getting on her period, her father, her mother, neither of her relatives ever talked to her about what it takes being a woman and how to manage the changes. This silence of men, as I said, we are in the system. We are the leaders and we are the police makers. That's why in many public schools, in the curriculum, we do not have menstruation, sexual and reproductive health topics. Because we, we view this thing as it's for women. We do not take our time to think or to put a priority to this. This topic of menstruation and reproductive health is very important. There's one person said, if something affects a woman, it affects the family, it affects the community, it affects the nation. So if men do not take time or do not stand for what, it's, for what matters to them, what matters for the family, then we will keep saying we want gender equality. But the real thing is we can't advocate for gender equality if a girl or a woman cannot stand and say what it takes being a woman, the change they go through, they can't speak about their own bodies. Then it's too far to say gender equality if they're not strong enough to stand and talk about their menstruation. We all know that they need things for their periods. Where do they get the money? If men, they hold the economy, they decide what to be done, where to go. The products they needed for the period management, they had very heavy tax. They are considered luxury products. 
women have to find other ways to manage their period, which adds up to the burden. It's viewed as something shameful. It has stigma. They are not strong enough to seek for facts and professional help. And again, what they need for their periods is too expensive. So it's all these, of, all these complications, they make them feel as if they're not humans, like, like they are subhuman. They carry this thing. Sometimes it causes depression. And they also may think that they are not worthy of respect or honor. They have to isolate or find something. This thing also puts them being vulnerable to infections. But we, we never took our time and think and make a decision that will save their lives. As I said, menstruation hasn't started recently. It was there. I'm having a few countries who, uh, which have removed period tax from menstrual products. It started in 2004, but women have been suffering for ages. Countries like Kenya, Canada, India, Colombia, Australia, Germany, Rwanda, and in some states in the US, these are the countries that have removed period tax. What about the rest? does not mean those countries don't have women. They have. But who has to speak? If women are not in the council, if women can't speak, then those men in the management, in the administration, they have to take time. They have to understand. If they are advoc advocating equality or helpful people, then they should consider what it takes being a woman. They should see the other side. I'm having another story. If we see this is too sensitive or it's something that's against our culture, then if we say we are one people, we are equal, then we should see how can we say that if one of us is not strong enough to say, to, to speak something about her own. I'm posing a question to you. If the world has 7.8 billion people, half of them are women, and half of the female population menstruate, approximated to 300 million every single day. This number no artist has ever reached. Why is it such a taboo? Thank you, and then share with your friend why. This silence has many effects to women and girls. In health, if they cannot stand and seek for facts and professional help, then they are vulnerable to reproductive tract infections. And when they are, when they are affected, they can't stand, they can't speak. So they secretly find a way to treat the diseases. And we know that the health services, the, the health service centers are not in every place, not in every corner. In town, sometimes it, it, it's fine, but in, in the rural areas, it's even worse. Now think of a woman or a girl in the, in the village where she has to walk kilometers to a health center. She has, she, she has these complications. She cannot speak. She can, she's not strong enough to, to speak to the other person. Think of how can she survive. Think of her future. Think, how can she participate in, in the class? How can she be independent? In education, there's a statistic worldwide that one out of three people in the world has an access to call it wash facilities. If one in three worldwide think of the girls and women in the rural places, Think women and girls in the developing countries. They cannot, they, they, they can't have dignified menstrual menstru management because they can't have, they don't have access to college toilets. No water, 
what is this curse? No toilet. Think, and they don't have the, they don't have the, the, the products to use. Think of these complications. And there is this notion that period is dirty. It's a bad luck. That's why they are not allowed to speak in public. So when a student or a, or a girl is in school, when she's on her period, she needs to keep quiet and pretend everything is okay. Even if she has serious cramps or she's feeling abnormal. And when they get on the periods, they, they change moods. But they need to act okay. Because if they show any, same, any sense of being on the period, they're getting teased. So they need to act. Are you okay? I am okay. Because they cannot speak. This reduces their concentration in the classrooms and the participation in the school activities. This is what reduces them, the ability to perform in the examinations. There was a research that was done in the northern Tanzania, which involved 432 boys and 524 girls. 13% of the girls accepted that they have experienced period teasing. And being teased, they said they, they either found a reason of not going to school or they reduced concentration and association with other students in the school. And 80% of girls accepted that they are afraid of being teased. Think of yourselves, think of yourself, maybe in this whole audience, we are all laughing at two or three girls because they're on the periods. Think of that embarrassment that they carry the whole, the, the whole day. That why are they getting laughed at? Because we only consider it being dirty and being bad luck. -like. But at the same time, we are looking for a wife to get married to. Think about that. To the moment, in 1,000 girls, 16.8% still miss school because of menstruation. This is the 21st century. Everything has advanced. But still you have 16% out of 1,000 girls who still miss school because of menstruation. As I said, that, lady, that young woman who wanted to become a very influential woman, but she couldn't because she had no facts about how it take, what it takes being a woman. It's a very simple thing, but kicks someone's dream into a cab. It also affects their dignity. Think of a girl who is laughed at because she is menstruating. She carries that. And it's approximated that if a girl menstruates three to seven days, it is, it is approximated that she, she will have six years. This means for her entire life, being on a period, it, it's approximated six years. Think of a girl now, six years of shame, six years of being laughed at. Six years of feeling not a normal human. Then if we, if we say we are all equal, then we should consider that. There's nothing wrong with a girl being on a period or a woman being on a period. It's completely okay and that who they are. We should stand as men and make them confident. I know some of, us, some of you are surprised. Like, who did this guy think he is? I'm just reminding you that this is also our duty, that we also need to know this and advocate this, that we are the people who set the tone. In the recent, re in, in, in the recent research done in Kilimanjaro showed that 70% of small business owners are women. Now think of that stigma Think of that shame. And remember, the, 
menstruate three to seven days each month. If a woman has a business, then those days she has to find a way either to close the business, either to, to reduce the working hours, or to find something that will make her not to be ashamed when she's working. It affects her economy, it affects the family economy, and the country's economy too. And how can we normalize this? How can we get this stigma off of our minds? How can we make girls attend classes and perform as boys? As men, number one, we should be responsible. 100% responsible. There is this tendency that we made in school that a parent assumes a teacher will teach everything and the teacher assumes this part the parent will cover. So in, the, in between, there is some, and, and, and is, there's a part that's not done because a teacher assumes this is for parent and a parent assumes this is for the teacher. We should be completely responsible for our kids, knowing what they are going through, listening to them. Parenting does not only end with giving them food, a place to sleep, and paying school fees. It goes deeper to having time with your kids, talking to them, listening to their ideas, what they go through, and you also share your experiences. Number two, men should practice positive masculinity. We should use our emotions and strength and talents to advocate better behavior to boys and the community. That in the end, we will stop viewing women as objects. The other one is education. We should teach our children at a very early age of what the changes they will have when they grow up, how to act. Of course, they may have some things to add, but we should pave a way for them to understand and explore more. They should be free. And of course, we should educate ourselves first, then to our kids. If we educate boys, then we reduce the period teasing in school. We should also educate adults. These are the parents, are the fathers, the uncles, that if we educate these guys, they will have time for their kids and provide for their kids. Leaders and police makers, if they understand about menstrual health, then they will put it a priority reduce the period tax, and make the product available in every place. We have beautiful cultures, very beautiful cultures. We have so many different cultures, but we should see which culture to leave behind and which culture we should move with. If a culture discriminates a woman, then we should leave that. A woman is a human as men. So if there is any culture that treats women differently, then it has to be left. Menstruation is natural and very normal. We should not let a woman's body being the source of her own shame. Now I'll ask you to do me a favor. Can you talk to the person next to you that period is normal? I know some haven't said it, and it's is okay. <laughs> if we normalize, if we normalize, if we normalize speaking about menstruation, then we unlock the progress related to health, gender, and education. Period 
are completely very normal. And it's not something big and huge that you cannot understand. It's not a rocket science. It's a period. Thank you.